This video will look at setting up the wall attributes and their associated framing tools. Note that dependent on customization, there may be differences to your own environment. To open the wall library, right click in 2D or 3D and go to insert wall. Or from the modeling tab, choose insert wall. The wall library allows us to select from different wall types, both exterior and interior framing, as well as some non-framing architectural wall types, such as foundation walls. Preset and custom added wall types can also be added, but this will be covered in a further tutorial. For this tutorial, we will choose an exterior CTU framing wall. In the layers column, we can see the various materials and their respective thicknesses used within the structure of the wall, as well as the default heights per layer as defined by the Z levels. Each layer has different options dependent on the layer type selected and alters the variables accordingly. These can manually be adjusted. Note that the pink frame layer controls all of the others. Layers can then be altered by clicking in the material column and selecting the appropriate option. To access the parameters for the actual structure of the wall, click on the frame layer within the material field, right click and go into framing tools. Default values will automatically be added from the wall library and the wall framing parameters. However, all can be overwritten to your requirements. The first tab is the general framing tab. Here are various basic parameters from the wall framing, such as corner details and stud spacing. Framing details determine if the wall is load bearing or not and adjust the joints as per the system parameters. Panel label is the prefix used when the user generates the panel breaks. This will automatically pick up the level the user is adding the wall into. End panel tolerance enables the user to shorten panels to create a gap at panel breaks. The under trusses checkbox will add additional studs when generating the framing under any truss envelopes. Moving on to the frame tracks and studs tab, here the user can define the profiles used in various parts of the frame. Single or double tracks and their respective profiles can be defined here. For the blockings, there are a combination of options. Flat horizontal bracing that runs on the outside of the panel can be toggled on or off, with the face this is added to determined by the type field. The integral lateral bracing has three main options, a continuous brace along the panel, staggered blocking in each bay, or no blocks at all. For each type, the user can define the height from the drop-down box, or simply just type in the height or height of the bracing required. Moving on to the frame openings tab, here the user can set up the rules for the opening types and the side stud profiles and quantities that are used. One of three definable header types will be used dependent on the opening's width in relation to these two definable values. The type of header style can be defined by clicking the select button and much like the corner types are selected using the diamonds. The advanced button allows you to add in further options for the opening details such as control over sill types, crippler rules and further accessories such as lintel plates. Moving on to the frame bracing tab, this allows you to define the diagonal bracing within the panel. Each type can be checked on or off with right and left putting in diagonal bracing to the panel ends on all putting bracing into each bay automatically. For each you can define if it is just a single brace or a K brace. In the frame service hole tab, you can customize the service holes even further. Default takes the values previously defined in the system parameters, but you can then override this by simply typing in the required heights. You can also determine the hole type used from the drop down menu. However, this will depend on the tools available on the roll former. There are also two toggle options to add service holes to both the top track and blocking in the center of each stud bay. Then there is the frame anchor tab which allows you to add in panel anchors from a variety of different manufacturers to both the top and bottom plates. Finally, there is an insulation tab where you can add in integral insulation into the frame. With the attributes adjusted, we can now click OK and are ready to begin adding the walls which will be covered in the next video. Thank you for watching.